What's cracking, guys? Omar Esau here, back with another video here today to talk about intermediate and advanced lifters. Who's an intermediate? I don't know, but that's what we're talking about today. One of the slight problems with YouTube, not here to complain, just to point out, when you create content and you put it out on YouTube, it reaches a wide net, right? There's an eclectic group of individuals watching this channel or any channel, really. There's beginners, intermediate lifters, advanced lifters. There's uh, people that only care about strength, people that care about strength and hypertrophy, people that only care about hypertrophy, people that care about neither and just want to not be fat. I relate my man. But when I make some videos, a lot of it will apply to a certain group, but maybe not be applicable to others. Today, we want to talk about hypertrophy considerations for intermediate and advanced athletes. We'll define, to make it very simple for this video today, an intermediate athlete is someone who has at least a few years of training under their belt. So there's no prerequisite, like you should be this strong. If you've been training at a certain level of intensity, so not just fucking around in the gym, you've been training at least two to three years, you're at least an early intermediate. Okay, so we'll get the conversation started. But you'll often hear, and correctly so, by a wide variety of individuals that progressive overload is very important, especially for beginners, you need to get stronger. And this naturally happens, right? When you touch a barbell, it's kind of magical. You can do any program. And that's why when I see beginners getting a lot of gains and then they start talking about their gains and what they did, it's like, that's cool, bro. Anything works for you. And over time, there should be a general direction of your strength going like this, over time. So you're getting stronger as a beginner, intermediate, and advanced lifter. But hypertrophy, for hypertrophy, I would put forth for late intermediate lifters, advanced lifters, is not nearly as important strength when it comes to hypertrophy, okay? And here's exactly what I mean. Seven, we'll show it right now, and I'm not trying to do, you know, an anecdotal like, oh, N equals one sample size, therefore work for me. But people lately have given, been given a lot of compliments on the ass chest. It's back. It's in full swing. I'm here. Shirt off, Severin. We didn't even train chest today. You can verify that. We did squat, uh, deadlift, and then some overhead press. It's still there representing. Guess what? What have I done differently? I've increased my volume. I actually have decreased the intensity of my bench press. And I've changed a few things that I'm gonna talk about. And I think we can see the results slightly. It's nothing crazy, like maybe I, I'm 3% bigger. But when you focus year to year, month to month, you notice these differences. So for the last four months, I've been training my upper body, in particular push, a little bit differently. What have I been training for my lower body? I've been trying to get stronger. Guess what? My deadlift is back up to basically exactly where it should be, where I'm confident I can deadlift 600 pounds any day that I don't feel like like shit. Cool. That's a huge strength gain, a regain of what I had before. And I might even be able to PR. So I've gotten either at least as strong or stronger. You know what? I measure everything. Everything. Have my thighs gotten bigger in the last four months? Seven. They have not. Okay. Squats, I'm uh, gaining back momentum when it comes to squats. I'm gaining back momentum when it comes to the intensity with squats. So from when I ended my fat loss phase to now, nothing. Okay. I've been focusing almost exclusively on strength. And that is because there's a delicate balance as a lifter. Here are some considerations that people don't really talk about. How much volume can one person handle? If there's a big variance. Okay. So across the spectrum of lifters, some people can handle more volume across I would say experience. So if you're deadlifting once again 600 pounds and so 80% is 400 some, like 480 pounds or whatnot, that's different for an individual once again than if you're at 500 or 400 pounds. There's an absolute low to consider. There's also, uh, once again, life stress or stressors outside of the gym. So someone that has a lot of stress outside of the gym, they have the job, they have, you know, uh, maybe work stress going on, they have school, they have whatever relationship stuff, they have personal problems their training volume is going to be different. Add to the fact that when you choose certain exercises, I think we can all agree that once you get past those beginner gains, there's a maximum threshold of volume you could do with a certain exercise. So uh, the squat is an example. Can you do 20 sets a week at at least, let's say, 60 or 70% and above? Yeah, for sure. 30 sets? I don't know. 40 sets? That's really pushing it. So now you need to vary your training. But let's also talk about bar speed, right? In general, powerlifting, I'd say, or strength is a low velocity sport, right? You don't really need to accelerate at a, at a crazy pace. I do think, and if you look at some of the research by Mike Zordos, I'll try and link actually in the description, power, so that's the intersection between speed and then also the weight that you're lifting, can be beneficial for some people. But if we look at speed of the barbell, if you're a pure strength athlete and all you care about, you want to pause the bench quick and then accelerate, the total time under tension, the mechanical tension, if we take a look at it, if instead you change that position a little bit, so you're bench pressing just for powerlifting, so you just want to increase that weight, you probably will have lower volume than a bodybuilder, your technique might be a little bit different. And people have correctly noted, for myself, when I've been lifting lately, 
In the last four months, I've changed my bench frequency to four times per week. Has my bench press gone up? Like, has my, have I regained strength? I'd say right now I could probably bench 350 to 360. It's not, right? I still, because we could test roughly the five rep max, I'm bringing it down a little bit slower. I'm pausing. I'm making sure I'm actually going with a wider grip and people correctly noted once again, I'm benching a little higher because I feel a lot of pec stimulation there. So I'm sacrificing overall strength to stimulate certain muscles, DOS pecs, a little bit more. And there's all these small trade-offs you need to consider where it gets far more complicated than just get stronger, bro. And if we take a look at what progressive overload truly means, which means in some sort of capacity over time, getting better, so that doesn't necessarily just mean getting stronger. You could do at the exact same weight, but the RP can go down. That's progress in and of itself. So I think objectively we understand, oh, more weight on the bar, that's good, but there's other dynamics or other considerations. We could talk about tempo, exercise selection, total volume being done, the RP that that volume has been done, the frequency that you're doing a particular lift, all those variations over time many things to consider that extend far beyond just getting stronger. All this to say for you right now listening, if you've been spinning your wheels, you're like, man, I want to squat, whatever, like 500 pounds, or I've got a pretty good squat, a pretty good deadlift, pretty good bench, whatever the lifts that you're trying to increase. But for like the last four to five months, I've just been spinning my wheels where I'm not getting stronger. Consider doing something else, right? Consider taking a break. So you've already tried that strength development block. It's not really going so hot for you. And said, change, hypertrophy block instead, lower the loads a little bit, focus on that constant tension, maybe get a little bit more gains because once again, you're changing your training style. It probably will induce a little bit more hypertrophy as you bump up that volume, lower that intensity. Do that for several months, feel good, joints, ligaments, everything feels great. You're ready to take it back on to that squat bench and deadlift and see what's up. But I think sometimes we get stuck in a hole. We get too fixated. Oh, I gotta increase this, I gotta get stronger. This is what's gonna happen. When I increased my back size and I did all those pull-ups, my one rep max on the pull-up probably didn't increase. But we saw what happened when I increased that volume to an area that could respond well to that and I could handle that amount of volume. Anyways, just things to consider. It's not just about volume. It's not just about intensity. Why for a lot of intermediate and advanced lifters, purely pursuing strength or being too strength focused might be limiting your long-term hypertrophy. Just things to think about. Lastly, I will link in the description Eric Helms, the video he did with me on my channel last year talking about uh, leg hypertrophy and how he changed up his training using less loads because he had to work around some injuries and once again got more gains if you want more information on this. Anyways, that's all the time we have. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you like the video, make sure to like the damn video. If you like some random posing, okay, because we're trying to get that trip to Dubai. It's expensive. The princes, they're not willing to pay. It's bullshit. It's, it's complicated. I, I, I don't want to bore anyone. Like the damn video. And I'll see all you guys, my rascals, in that next one. Peace. Eat your vegetables. Eat your vegetables. Eat your fucking vegetables.